thank you. Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to thank uh, Design and Dava for inviting me. It's a great opportunity to be here. And uh, it's my first time as well in, in, in South Africa. So thanks a lot. Um, well, I, t I titled this Forum Follow uh, Meaning. This, this came out of a conversation I had a, a couple of years ago in, a, in an opening and uh, how it always goes. Uh, someone asks you, what do you do? Um, and, I, and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a pro designer, uh, industrial designer. And he said, oh, so you are a form giver. And I thought it was a bit of an insult. Um, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't uh, what uh, I was expecting people to think about uh, product design. Um, for me, uh, it's mainly about content and designing uh, uh, something that has a meaning for people. And then the shape uh, came afterwards. I like, I like of course, um, beautiful things or things that are uh, nicely to the eye, but I think it's very important that the content um, has a meaning. So, uh, a bit for, about my background, I, I, this, I, um, I studied uh, art, and uh, in my last year at university, I, I just changed to design. Uh, so, I was a bit, um, I don't know, I, I, I thought art was very um, on one side of, uh, of the um, society. Um, I saw it like um, very, um, encrypted wall, uh, something very difficult to grab for the normal people. And I liked that design was just in the middle between culture and commerce. And for that mean, like, culture is all the relations we people have with an object, independently of if it's sold or not, something you can buy in a second hand or something you inherit from uh, your grandma. And in commerce, it's, it's just like a something, how that object came there. I mean, it's a, it's a relation between systems that bring that object there. So is that these two worlds colliding um, with one side all, all the things that makes object work, and in the other is like the bigger picture, it's like you just zoom out uh, one or two steps, and then you suddenly see that, well, the, the, the object will have a life cycle, and then, you know, the, the object will try to communicate a brand value, and then uh, it, it just, it's just the context of it. Uh, I mean, it's just going to change the object itself. It, it's not the same if you have a limited edition or you do a thousand objects. It's not going to be the same process. It's not going to be the same um, distribution channel. So it's all very, very related. And uh, there was a, something very interesting about it. So this is a simplified uh, way of that graphic, uh, where you will have art like the form, the purest way in a way of defining culture, especially if you're an artist and you don't sell, uh, because uh, I mean, because that will be the purest form of art. And then in the way of commerce, you will have the stock market on the other side, which will be just transactions without no interest of you know, any cultural interest on it. It's just about um, money, basically. So what, what I try to... I, I know it's a broad definition, I mean, between art and the stock market, <laughs> there is a, a huge space. Um, but my, my intention is to, to um, consider design in that, in that middle line, um, and sometimes it will os oscillate uh, up and down. Um, but coming from the art world, I usually start more close to the top, and it never happened to me that a project starts closest to the stock market and then goes towards, towards design. So this is the, one of the first projects I did after graduation. Uh, it's called the Ink Calendar. And this came about, about looking at people, how people drink their coffee, and I realized um, many people just dip parsley a sugar cube and then wait for a few seconds until um, the coffee rise, and when it's about to touch their fingers, they release it. And I thought, well, that, that's interesting. Why people do this? And, well, I couldn't understand, like, but I, I guess like many things, there's no a why. I mean, there's something magical about it. There is, there is this thing that you don't, un you don't understand why coffee goes against gravity, and, and then just you find pleasure on it. 
Um, and I found very, very interesting um, thing. So um, I was invited to I was invited to uh, take part in, a, in an exhibition called Gradual, which was about um, it was a very interesting theme curated by a, a former tutor at the RCA. And he we have very little time, like one month or something like that, uh, for the London Design Week. And he said, "Well, let's gonna do it the other way around." And we will open this exhibition, and instead of having final pieces and people came to the opening and see the final show, we will open, and there will be just people working on the space, they will have just uh, people building ideas, you will bring an idea to the space and then we, we develop from it. Which means, which was very clever, that people need to come back to the exhibition regularly or at the end to really see what is, what is in the exhibition. So I started um, experimenting with this idea. I have this idea of, um, of the sugar and, and the capillary uh, effect on, on what happens. Is this how plants absorb water? Um, so I started uh, trying with a lot of paper stocks and trying with a lot of different inks and trying to make it into something. This is some of the first experiments, obviously referring to the plants and trying to build uh, a plant from it, so uh, I will apply a, a chemical agent to a paper and dip in one, one strip of the paper on, onto it. Um, the, the, the plant will grow slowly um, uh, with the time. It's a very slow process. Um, what I found interesting as well is the you like in many projects, there is always surprises uh, when you do this. I remember, in, you cannot see here, but in the edges, of, uh, I, I bought this green ink, and in the edges of it, you start to see uh, a color separation. You will, ha you will see a bit of yellow and a bit of blue, which is how they, I, I guess they made the, this green color. But when the, when the ink goes through the paper, it gets somehow separated slightly, and you can see it on the edges of it. Uh, this could absorb four times its weight in, in, in water. What I found is that people um, don't relate uh, very well to abstract things. Uh, I mean, numbers doesn't mean anything but a sequence. Uh, at least it's an anniversary and it's, it's or, or, you know, a wedding or there is something attached to it. Uh, it's very empty. It's, it's, that's what they are. It's just an empty uh, vessel. And I wanted to make it more haptic. I, I wanted to appeal more to other senses. I find the numbers uh, okay, but it's, it's too uh, brainy. I think I think that it could, it could have a bit more of connection uh, emotionally. So um, my idea was to uh, relate uh, the color temperature, because light is measured in uh, this color temperature. The, um, it's measured in kelvins, uh, which is a unit to, to define um, a range of light. Uh, so you will have warmer light and colder light, and this is, there is a graph for that. And I wanted to transfer that, like uh, relate the weather of the months to the calendar. So you could visually uh, have the, this impression of where you, you are in the month without having to nearly read October. But just uh, this is the scale on the, on the, on the bottom uh, of this. Uh, it's a standard called D65. This is a geeky thing. But, um, it's, um, it's just uh, an standard of uh, the, does the spectrum of light and, and the, the different uh, color variations you can get onto it. So I relate that to uh, every color to a month of the year. Uh, always thinking in, well, obviously in Europe, here, here it wouldn't work. Uh, but uh, to, to have in the winter months uh, colder uh, colors and then it goes towards the green in the spring and then yellows red in the summer. So you, by looking at the calendar, you will get an impression of the, of the temperature outside. And, uh, you know, like trying to push, to push the calendar more in all the senses, but, but the visual sense. Um, and um, one thing that is uh, as well interesting is that that will allow you to visualize somehow time. Because um, uh, when the paper absorbs the ink, uh, the ink bottle start to uh, the level start to lower down, so basically your your time disappear. Uh, you have a physical liquid which represents your time, and then it goes down, it goes down, it goes down, and and just 
uh, what goes into the paper, but there is this physical, um, make it visual that the time disappear, which uh, usually time is very difficult to, to control or to, to have a perception of it. This will for, for October. And so the, the, when I was doing the experiments, I have less than, than a month for this exhibition. So uh, the thing with this is, that is it's a physical phenomenon. You cannot push it, you cannot tell, tell him to go faster. Uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, either um, build uh, anything to, to create a, a, um, a representation to give me an idea that what, what will happen. So I, will, I was doing this very quickly without thinking too much, just trying to, to um, come out you know, with, with my idea and, 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 and somehow make it, but I didn't know how, how it was going to work. So I, I did realize after, this is the second version or third version of it, uh, you have double numbers. So double numbers, because this works by, by surface, you basically, um, you, you measure how much it takes for the ink to uh, cover one square centimeter of paper. And then if the, the speed is regular, because if the paper has regular cell sizes, you can measure how long it will take um, for, the, for, the, for all the time to go. So I realized one of the first things, it will go off time. If you don't have double numbers uh, very quickly, uh, then number surface is different. So I use this font, which is quite regular, a square. Um, it's German font. And, and uh, it could allow me to give, give a bit more approximate. It's, it's still very difficult to to get to the calculation at, at, at each time. Um, in the one, uh, the first number, I remove the zero because obviously I have this trait of ink already uh, fitting it. Um, and another of the questions is, uh, people ask is, how, how, how did the last number get in from the first? And what happened, and I didn't know when I started doing it, is that every number is also a container. So, only the one gets the ink from the, from, from the bottle. The rest gets the ink from the previous number because the material is like a sponge. So it's just uh, collecting um, ink. Um, so after that, uh, I did a Christmas card. Uh, I think it took four, four days for this to complete. Um, it's very, very uh, slow process and um, uh, yeah, because I, I had it in this exhibition, and, and then it was quite. Uh, I wanted to do something else with it, and and I did this card, and I sent it to some people, and and then he, I had an exhibition about water, and then uh, then it went into. But it was two years later. I don't know how these things happened, but it went into blogs, and suddenly it started to be all over, and, and I got people asking me to do other things with it, obviously. So. Um, I did this for uh, an advertising agency, Euro uh, RSCG, um, and they asked me uh, to do this for a uh, Red Cross calendar uh, to uh, to encourage people to donate uh, blood. And the idea will be that the, the blood is just filling up uh, one the name of one person every every day. Um, so those those are from f some of the tests of the of the images. This was quite strange because I got this email, and then in the next like six eight weeks, I got another two emails from two other advertising agencies that wanted to have the same idea, similar, or very similar. I didn't know why, and um, maybe it was in the air, but it was very strange uh, to see that, and or maybe the red of of, of the calendar just triggered that. No, no idea, and then. And then I did this as well for another advertising agency in uh, Mumbai. Uh, they asked me to do th something to promote a uh, range of stock, uh, um, or recyclable uh, stock paper for a company. So they wanted to, <coughs> to use uh, the, back the background will be like um, all with a, a recycled uh, paper stock, and then they will put these, these uh, posters on the entrance of some office blocks, and, and that is say is, you know, we re recycle paper so, so that your trees keep growing, and this will last uh, about a week to just complete. So this is a <clears throat> another project um, 
I did um, this start, started like a, an exercise or like many other things that, that someone asked me to do a small exhibition and and then they told me there was no budget at all. And um, I was going anywhere there for a, for a workshop. And I thought, <coughs> um, OK, let's gonna do something that is also useful for me. It's, it's more like a test. And, and uh, so I live in, in, uh, in a very mixed uh, area of London. This is Dalston. Uh, and I like I like it pretty much. There is there is a lot of uh, like different cultures in a very very small space, um, and so I decided to center uh, the project on uh, the one pound shops and do uh, one object a day for for ten days. It's not consecutive days. I will go to the shop uh, over a two months one day and just pick up an object and try to. Uh, propose something else uh, based on that object. So I'm going to show you just a couple of them. I, lo I love the, the idea of one pound shops. Uh, there is several things that are very interesting. One is this efficiency of one coin for one object, uh, the transaction of it. And uh, it's something very simple and everyone can understand. And, and then these the places, there is not really merchandise, uh, you know, like display a strategy inside or anything like that. As are very, very crude places. And I really like to work with these kind of everyday objects. So, yeah, again, you know, you, you can, I take these pictures all the time, and you can see this system as well. I don't know if it, if it exists here, but in England, you, you buy the fruits by bowls, which cost a pound in, in markets. And um, I came from, from Spain, and uh, Spain never, never seen that before. Um, so it was very strange, but uh, as well, again, a simplification of that transaction, uh, which uh, works quite well. And then uh, there's so many things in these, these uh, images that I, t I take quite, quite impulsively and then try to read into it. And you have this grass, uh, making it uh, fake, fake grass, making it uh, more natural. And, um, so back to the to the one pound uh, shop. These these two shops is, are just one in front of each other, and I guess they try to compete. So one is one p less than the other, but but you have you have to cross the road, which is a risk, <laughs> especially. Uh, so I don't know if it's worth it. But um, other thing you can see is um, there is so many string gums on the entrance on the floor that you don't know, you know, is that the people that go to the shops eat a lot of chewing gum. Uh, you know, I, don't, I try to see what is the relationship between all these, these sort of uh, traces of, of behaviors that you see and, and try to read onto it. So the first day I enter into the shop, uh, trying to find an object to redesign, I see this. And uh, it struck me a bit, like, you know, how neat the, the, the bottom shelf is, how neat on the top you have. And then you have this uh, lemon squeezer, and it's all, you need some cardboard there to hold it. And when it's not there, it gets all messy. And you think, well, that's how your kitchen cupboard is going to look when you buy this thing. Uh, because you don't have a space to, to you know, <laughs> to put more things, and these, these things doesn't allow you to, to uh, pile things up. So, um, you know, I went to the other shop in front, and I found the same product, and it's the same, product, the same problem. Uh, it's all stuck, they, they remove the cardboard, and then you can see uh, what it will make in your, in your kitchen. So I took it, I bought it, and I took it apart. Um, there's just three parts. So I cut the, the transparent lid and just reversed the other thing. Uh, and it became flat, so you could already stack them. I mean, this is, this is you know, it's not even a, a, a project, it's just more like an exercise. But, but you realize how important this will be with, a, with, a, with an object that is manufacturing such a big numbers. You know, what affects not only in your kitchen, but when it came from China into containers, all the chain is, is uh, so this option actually uses less material and gives more for it. So, uh, you know, it's this kind of thing that you think, well, wh wh who did this? I mean, <laughs> how, how, how can you get someone designing this and not thinking uh, a little bit more? I mean, I, I guess the, some people think that, that, you know, if you have a designer, maybe that goes into the price of the object, object but 
uh, you know, I, you would have saved uh, money, actually. So that's how some of the shops look inside. Uh, there is not a marketing display strategy, as you can see. Um, and, and, and then there is, there is um, you know, but I like it a lot because, it, it, you know, it's very democratic. You just put all the objects <laughs> in, the, in, the same, in the same level. <laughs> or oh, well, you have your eye level and then the rest of the levels. Uh, uh, and you get, um, you know, you get to, 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 you know, looking for things in these places is such a nightmare. Um, but, but I spent a, a bit of time there, you know, going over two months, and by the end of it, I knew where everything was. Even some customers were asking me where I can find this. <laughs> and, and the second, second object um, I attract my attention in the second time I, I go to the shop is this flashlight. And why, why I like it? I mean, it, it looks like a normal flashlight, a uh, nice, uh, I mean, a standard packaging. But if you look at it, it just says, similar to a scene on TV. <laughs> and you think, and you think, well, I mean, what are you trying to tell me? Uh, is, is, is this a, <laughs> you know, is this a fake? You're going to sell me a fake? Or, um, and I think that's, that's the main problem with, with one-pound shops, you know, it's, it's not that they're cheap, it's that they're trying to do something that is more expensive for very, very little price, and that's obviously not possible. So you end up with a very bad quality. You know, so you could have a good one-pound shop and say, well, you know, I won't give you a lot because it's just one pound what you pay for, but, you know, you're going to have something reasonable. Um, so I came up with this, uh, this proposal for it, uh, which will be like a torch, which there is no switch there, uh, and you use the battery as, a, as the handle, basically. You just plug it, uh, the, this battery has the two contacts on, on top, so it's quite easy to plug, and then, you know, and then I, I paint it uh, like fluorescent, so you, need, you have it in a cupboard and you need to use it, and, and, you know, you, you will have the, the, the bright light and indicate as well the polarity. Um, and I think you could do this very cheap and propose it to the clients without saying, you know, I'm trying to do or trying to be this. You know, and I give you half of the uh, lamp torch, you have to put the other half and, and it used to your hand, uh, you know, to, as the handle, but, but it will be sort of more honest. Um, this is a, a, another project I did for um, an exhibition in, in Glasgow. Uh, it was for, an, uh, for a gallery, an art gallery. Again, there was not much budget. And, and we were a group of designers um, collaborating on this. Um, you know, and and the, the, the main idea was we had to ship it to, to, from London to Glasgow, from many studios. And we thought, well, let's going to do something on the time of lightness. You know, some objects will relate to the idea of lightness, which in a way is being associated always to progress in, a, in a, um, a, um, you know, airplanes and things like that, engineering. But at the same time, is um, you know, it will allow us to ship everything very lightly from London to Glasgow. So I thought I, I, I wanted to do something which was not about the, uh, design. I was imagining uh, I wanted it's a, it was like a little challenge for me. Um, and I thought, what, what if I do something without designing? You know, if I do a bit like a, like a DJ or like an editor, where I will take some other existing shapes and work out my way out of it and produce a new object. So I went to the supermarket and I started cutting uh, bottles, trying to do like a, a set of cutlery with it. Um, and, uh, you know, like, because... Cutlery is quite difficult to, to make. You usually need to, be, uh, to make uh, quite a lot of quantity to, to compensate for the cost of the, of the molds. Um, I thought if I use the molds of other people, you know, I mean, they did molds for, for doing these uh, bottles, I might be able to, to work something out. So I went and found different, different bottles, and uh, I cut many of them. I don't have pictures of all the uh, trials. But at the end, I, I came to with these uh, two sets of bottles that will work very well for, uh, for a cutlery. I mean, the shape is there, and it feels nice, and has the right dimensions, and it should perform as a cutlery, but I, I need to, to like sculpt onto the bottles and cut. 
So I use a process um, where they can uh, make any object uh, conductive, electric conductive, and then a bit like will, you will do with jewelry, they can coat it with a metal. Uh, so I prepare a set of a fork, knife, and, and a spoon. And they were coated first on copper. Uh, this is very light by a strong, but a strong uh, process, uh, where the copper is electrically, uh, dip, um, you know, applied as a layer to the surface. And then they were uh, coated uh, again in um, tin to make it uh, resistant to food uh, acidity and uh, etc. Okay, uh, this is. Uh, this is another. Thank you. And this is a, one of my favorite writers, and a, a sentence uh, that I put there just to remind me, you know, what uh, a bit the job of a designer is. It's always like uh, difficult to look at something when you see it too many times, and we are always surrounded by uh, design things. Everything is being designed, so it's very difficult. Um, to get this distance, and this shows a bit of my process. I'm constantly looking at, uh, looking at this kind of thing and trying to push my... It's like I'm going to the gym, but for, for your head, like trying to push you to look at things and read into, into behaviors. This, is, this I found it in uh, my local hardware shop. There was these uh, four sets of doors, and each one was a spray on the lock with a different color. And at the beginning, I thought it's maybe a new graffiti trend, uh, but then re you realize it's, it's someone that has to open the shop every day and doesn't know which, which key corresponds with which lock. So uh, being someone from a, from a hardware store, he probably went in, picked up a, a can of paint, and just uh, painted its uh, lock in a different color, which I think is a great, great uh, idea. Um, this shows as well this idea of, uh, well, this is like a series of, of images which I call um, design by use, and, and it's a bit like what would happen if we do the other way around, if, 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 uh, if instead of designing for someone to use things, you, you look at people using things and then we design them back, backwards. This is what is known like uh, uh, the side path, and, and what is interesting is that are, are created by many, many people taking the same decision that to cut corners on a garden. But it's not one person that will create this, it's an accumulation of, of patterns, so it's a sort of uh, crowdsourcing uh, for design, uh, which I find this interesting. This is a very interesting um, thing uh, happened with uh, being um, you know, I pass this every day, and I saw these cigarettes, and then next day it was like that. <laughs> uh, so you you get um, you know you get to to see uh, how people don't hesitate to put the cigarette inside, and they leave it on the top because they don't know if they completely extinguish it. And then someone didn't do that, and that's what you get. So you, you generate a behavior, and then there's not there's not a something to 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 do it. Um, customized uh, bike, I find really interesting. Um, and um, some people, you know, need to put sticker to uh, own different, uh, to know which which cup did you use. This is a project I did for um, Bev Clico. Uh, was for a fundraising event, and the idea was to create something based on the color of the um, brand, which this color is only for that brand. Um, so, initially I thought of decomposing it in the visual spectrum in additive system of light and transferring that to, um, transferring that to glass, you know, using it as a pixel. So, mixing a, 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 a process which is 2,000 years old, like glass blowing, with something like the idea of a pixel, which is very contemporary. So, I went to find some people that in, could make it. And uh, um, this is part of the process. It's very complicated. It's uh, difficult to, to because the, the material has a certain time to, to work with. That's how it filters the light on the floor. You can see. Um, so we did uh, three vases with it, and the idea will be like 
each bus has exactly percentage of that color, as, uh, and, like if you got in a pixel. And then when you super, uh, superpose the buses, you will get the color going through. But it's only something you will perceive. Uh, it doesn't really exist there. So I think I'm going to stop there. And thank you very much.